what we have here is a plot of an actual room, and uh, we see a before and after uh, using the E-Trap. Henry, go ahead and uh, tell us what we're looking at. Well, this is a pretty good room, and it doesn't have really high magnitude peaks in the uh, uh, in the base range because it's been it's actually a mastering studio in San Francisco uh, that is uh, quite established and quite high tech, very nice room. But uh, what we're looking at here are uh, there's four traces on the screen, and the the top trace is a measurement made against one of the walls where that mode was very present. Um, we're working on a mode that is from the front to back, so there's if you're sitting at the at the controls you'd be looking at one wall with where the loudspeakers are, and then the wall behind you is where we suck the microphone. Do you, re you refer to these positions as modes, or are you... Re no, the mode is, is, the, uh, is the frequency at which the room resonates. Understood. <laughs> but uh, a simple room, a rectangular room, has three primary modes. It's between the three dimensions of the room, front to back, side to side, and top to bottom. Got it. And those are usually the most dominant things. Well, um, this one, we were working on the front to back mode, in fact, and the easiest place to measure that is at, at one of the walls, either the front wall or the back wall. So we put a microphone right there, and we got this trace, the blue trace, with this peak right here. This is the resonant frequency of that, of that room in that mode. It's about 35 hertz. Well, we, uh, we tuned the E-trap, and when we turned it on, we got this orange trace. We got about three or four dB of uh, magnitude reduction at that frequency there. Now, nobody sits against the wall when they're mixing or uh, mastering. So we put the microphone then at the uh, control, you know, the engineer's position, the listening position. And uh, without changing the E-trap or anything, we already had it tuned. And, and you can see that there is about the same, about three or four dB reduction. So this, this peak is before the E-trap, this peak is after you turned on the E-trap. That's right. And basically what we're looking at is uh, you know, resonant bass frequencies that get in the way of monitoring, get in the way of tracking, get in, they just get in the way. They, uh, right, there, it's a resonance that um, when we apply some damping to, just as if you might, if you rang a bell and you stuck your finger on the bell, it would stop ringing. And rooms have that similar character. And the, the traditional way to do that is to add uh, a lot, well there's a few different ways, but at these frequencies, the one that really works is to use a huge volume of absorbing material in a place where that uh, frequency can be absorbed. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out about the E-Trap is it does not hook up to the sound system at all. This is completely independent of the speaker system. It stands alone, it's an acoustical product that basically stands in the room, you turn it on, once you tune it, you forget it. It operates in the air in the room. It does not operate in the signal path of anything That's in the studio. Right. And there are, are some other schemes out there that equalize the monitoring system. You know, they, they do some uh, processing to the, uh, to the signal that's coming out of the loudspeakers, which we didn't think was a good idea. We, we want to leave that alone. We don't want to start, you know, altering what you hear through your monitors. We're trying to fix a resonance in the room. So it stands alone. Okay, that's, uh, I think we've uh, basically covered the E-Trap. We're going to look at some other bag end stuff, but right now, Henry Hine, bag end. Thank you.